That's all our job. Well, good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good day to be in the Lord's house. Amen. He's so good to us and faithful to us. His love is never failing. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, sit. Lord, I spoke the word. You sing it all for me. You've been so, so good to me.
first started coming, y'all have y'all just really have started opening up and letting down. I love it.
you up this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to do a round one. I hope that's all right. We normally, we normally don't do rowdy at this point in the service, but I, I feel like Sunday, so we're excited about that. 
Uh, so pray for all of us. And, uh, and then on tomorrow, Chris flies out to California. Her best friend is having surgery, very uh, kind of unexpected surgery tomorrow. So Chris is going to fly out and be with her uh, next week. So Savannah and I are going to be, you know, partying it up while she's there. So, <laughs> and I pray for her, Chris, as she travels and ministers uh, this week in that circumstance. Heavenly Father, so, so thankful, and we're just so we're so glad to just be in your presence, Father. And in your presence, there is joy. And I'm thankful that in your presence, Father, there is, your word says that there, that, that there is a time for everything. So that we know that in your presence, there's a time for healing, and there's a time for, for restoration, and there's a, there's a time for reverence, and there's a time for worship. But I'm thankful that there's also a time for joy, and there's a time for laughter. There's a time for love. Father, there is a, there is a, a time for your word. A time for you to speak to us, Father. For your Holy Spirit to, to move in our, in our hearts and minds. Father, we give you this time. We give you the worship. We give you the joy. We give you the laughter. We give you our hearts. Father, take our hearts and soften. Open them up for what you have for us today. I want you to give a brother Andy to speak to us today. Father, help us be receptive to that word and apply it and use it to be better servants than our church members, better followers of you. And so thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ and all God's people say. Thank you, Brandon and Chris and Savannah. Y'all always bless us with your music, and I'm so thankful for that. But on today, I'm even just a little bit more thankful. Uh, because as y'all were singing, I was down there singing myself. And, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I sounded pretty good you know, in the background. And, you know, I'm just, that's just a plug for me. But, um, and I also am thankful that you didn't call me to sing in replace of you whenever you're gone. Uh, in the shower, I'm awesome. I really am. But um, now, Carrie, man, I think so. Uh, so we're going to start off today. My sermon title is Unplugged. Uh, I don't have that on the screen, but that's what I came up with. And um, we're going to be starting in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for you giving us that ability that you're always right there, that you're always at our right hand, and you're always there to support us. And, and Lord, we just want to give you that thanks and we want to give you that praise. And, and we just ask that you lift us up today, Lord, as I speak on what you put on my heart. And it's not my words, Lord. It's what you placed on me to speak about today. And I just ask that you strengthen me and you help calm my spirit. Um, and I just ask that you be with this church each and every day um, as we go forward in this venture that we're on together. In Jesus' name, I'm Amen. So, I've got a little story time for us. And someone gave me this story this week, um, a friend of mine, and he had told me about a husband and a wife who had been married for several years. And they was driving down this highway, and the wife looks over at her husband, and she says to him, you know, I remember the times whenever we used to sit right next to each other. We were right there together. And she said, well, we don't, we don't do that anymore, and I miss that. And the husband, as only men can do, looked at her and said, I'm not the one who moved, you did, because I'm driving. <laughs> and you know, we say that, but isn't it true in our life 
in our time that we look over and we say to our to God or we say, where have you been? But you know, it's really not him who moved because he should be in the driver's seat. It's us who have taken that step to the side. And you know, I know personally myself I've done that. I'm not telling you that you've done it. I'm saying I know I've done it. And so I know if I've done it, I know all of us have. I know all of us have been through those struggles. And I did a little bit of research, and it shows that from 2011 to 2019, that a disconnect has increased in churches. It increased from 59% to 64%. And they claim that that was between the ages of 18 and 29. I'm not going to say that I 100% agree with that age category because I believe here in the last few years that that's happened across the board, no matter whether you're 18 or you're 75. Um, it's happened. And, you know, they talk about different things and what has happened and what has caused this disconnect. Um, and I'm trying to stay with my notes, guys, so y'all please forgive me, but... They say that social media has caused a lot of this. And I don't have my phone up here with me today. It's sitting over there, but when you think about it, they tell us this story that social media is supposed to bring us together, right? Facebook is supposed to bring us together. Instagram, whatever it is, whatever that social media platform is, cell phones. I mean, we've got computers sitting right in our hands at most of the time. And it's supposed to bring us closer together. It's supposed to bring us into a relationship. But I mean, if you guys found out that that's really a bunch of bull, right? Amen. I mean, because when you look at it, how many times do you just scroll right past something on Facebook? You don't even give it a chance. You just, oh, Eddie's posting something again, and you scroll right on past. Or you say, oh, it's just, you know, somebody asking for something. So you scroll, you just keep scrolling right on past and you may be missing God's message. You could be missing someone who's hurting, someone who needs your support. And I know as a church, as a church family, and Brother Jim talked about that earlier, and it is perfect. We are a family, right? And in families, what happens? We argue, right? We don't always agree. We don't always get along. But as a family, we're always supposed to come together. And we're always supposed to support each other. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you and say that I believe that we always do. Because we don't. We don't always support each other. There's people who have been hurting in our church. There's people who have been hurting outside of our church. That we might not have reached out to and said, hey, how are you doing today? And you really wanted to hear what their response was. You know, how many times would you say to somebody, how are you doing? I mean, I would picture to say in the great state of Texas that we say that probably a hundred times a day. But really, that's just us in Texas, especially these days, to say, hey, I really don't want to hear what you got to say, but you know what? I'm hoping everything's okay. And then we move on. And we go on about our lives. And it really is true. But if you would take the time when you ask somebody, hey, how are you doing? I've watched myself do. I've asked somebody how they're doing, and I'm on my phone. And I'm scrolling. And I really hadn't heard anything that they said. I'm guilty of it. So, I mean, I'm guilty of it. When we watch, she'll probably tell you, a million times that she's talking to me and I'm scrolling on my phone looking at something. And so, you know, I know we're all guilty of it. And there's several things that I believe that has caused the disconnect. I think some of it is within the church itself that we're not doing our best job of reaching out and making sure everybody's okay. When that one person misses Sunday, we're not sending that text message and saying, hey, I hope everything's okay. 
We're not sending that card or we're not reaching out to them in some way when we have all these tools at our fingertips. We've got that cell phone, like I said, we've got our computers. Um, you know, we got so many ways to reach out and say, I was thinking about you today. Now, me and Brother Clyde, and I'm not trying to embarrass you, but first of all, let me tell you, happy birthday. Yesterday was Clyde's birthday. Um, me and him have a relationship where we reach out to each other quite a bit. There's times when I don't do so good. There's times that he doesn't do so good. But we always, whenever we get on the phone with each other, that's usually one of the first things that we say is, hey, I apologize, I haven't checked up on you recently. Um, and then when we end the conversation, we always say we're going to do better. But, you know, we don't always do better. And I'm sure y'all do that. You know, I mean, how many times do you check on your parents, you know, and you say, hey, how's your day going? Or you go by and stop and check on them. You go in and check on them. You see if there's anything that they need. Um, but that disconnect, it does happen in our churches, unfortunately, where we kind of get so caught up in everything that we need to do. Um, we get caught up in our youth ministries. We get caught up in our Sunday morning worship time. We get caught up in all these rituals that we have to do that we miss the number one thing. Without you guys, all that's for nothing. Without you being here and being able to be a part of this congregation, it's really for nothing. Um, because y'all are what makes up the church. Jesus has told us that many times before that you come to where one gathered, two or more gathered in my presence, I will be there. And we're there. We're here now. And we need to do a better job as a church. And I'm not saying just Ebenezer. I'm talking about the church as a whole of reaching out to people. Now, I'm not going to just get on the church today because that's not what I'm here to do. I'm also here to, to get on ourselves a little bit. In that study, it says that people feel disconnected because of a lack of involvement. Well, our lack of involvement isn't always because somebody didn't ask us to do something. Our lack of involvement could be because we didn't go to that person and say, hey, what can I do? Is there an area in the church that needs help? Whether it's mowing the yard, whether it's cleaning the church, whether it's teaching children's chapel, working in the nursery, um, you know, there's so many things that you can do. So I don't want to say that it's just the church not coming and saying, hey, we need your help. Because that's not solely our responsibility either as a church. You have a responsibility before yourself and before God to do that. Amen. To say, what can I do to help you? So when I'm saying that we don't reach out, that's not saying that picking out a name and saying, you're not reaching out. You're not reaching out either. So we got to do better about that as a, as a society, as a church, as an individual. They talk about in this study that um, it will lead to um, our, mind, our lack of involvement, increase, it, the increase in our moral society, social media, um, they, they even talk about in this study that our sins cause us to drift away. And I can remember when we had communion. And I just want to thank the church when we had communion before Brother Matt left. Um, that was the most honest and real time that I've experienced in a long time. Where people said things that were on their heart. Um, people got up and said, you know, hey, I didn't. I didn't always believe that I was good enough. I didn't always believe that you came for me. But that's just the case. He came for you. He came for me. He came for all of us. And, you know, so when you sit down and you think, 
And I'm, and I'm thinking back on those on that night when all these people said all these wonderful things, things that have been on their heart, and maybe they're embarrassed to share, or maybe they feel like somebody may look at them in a different way. That's what we all are. We are all sinners. None of us are above anyone else. Um, we all make mistakes. But guys, I need to share something with you that if you don't forgive yourself for the mistakes you made, I promise you, you're going to stay stuck. You will stay stuck. You have to learn to forgive yourself. Amen. You also have to learn to forgive others who have wronged you because that takes you away from what you're here for in church. If you don't forgive those who have wronged you or you feel like they have wronged you, then you're going to say so. And then you're going to start drifting further and further. And then you say, you know what? Ebenezer's not for me. And I'm going to go to somewhere else. And it's not because of the job. It's not because of the relationship. It's not because of um, anything else. It's because somebody you feel treated you badly. And now I'm going to go to another church. And I'm going to experience and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Well, guys, I hate to tell you, but Ebenezer Baptist Church is not the only church who has experienced this today. There's other churches out there who have experienced this same thing. And if you go there, guess what? For a little while, you're the new person, and they're going to check on you. And they're going to say, hey, how are you doing? Everything going okay? We got all these ministries for you to do, and we want you to do this, and we want you to do that. But then, slowly but surely, things got to go back to the way they were at your own church. And you sit back and you say, what happened? It's not the church. It's not the church that you're going to. It's what you're doing. It's what you're doing in life. And I want to share with y'all a personal experience. I know a lot of y'all don't know a lot of my story. So I want to share a little bit of it, if you'll let me do that. So about 20 years ago, I felt like I was called to the ministry. I was on fire. When I tell you I was on fire, listen, I was there on Wednesday night, I taught Sunday night, I taught um, Sunday school. I did all these things. And so the pastor at the time came to me and said, we would love for you to preach. We would love for you to preach. So I preached a time or two. And I got up there and I, and I felt like I did okay. You know, I probably could have done better. Uh, but I felt like I did okay. So I said, you know what? That's what God has called me to do. That's what I'm supposed to do. So I go home and I'm excited and something derails that whole thing. And I'm not going to speak about what happened, but I'm going to tell you that I got so angry with God. And I said to him, why? Why would you bring me to this point? Why would you bring me here? And then you just pull that rug out from underneath. So I went on with life and I slowly started to pull back, right? I started to pull away from certain ministries. I started to do the things that I used to do and I stopped being a part and I stopped being that vocal presence in our church. And we have some people who are very vocal in our church and we need that. We need those people who are vocal. We need those people who are gonna go out and support. Well, I stopped doing that. And I just got mad and more mad and more angry. And you know what happened? I started going to church all together. And you know who I blame? I blame everybody but me. Because that's what we do. We blame everybody but ourselves. So I said, you know what? It's not me. I didn't do it. They did it. They were the ones who did it, not 
Eddie? Eddie be wrong? No. No, there's no way. So I kept on going and I kept on walking my life. And one day, somebody slapped me in the face. And I'm going to leave this person's name out because I don't want to embarrass you. But I got in this vehicle. And I said, why do you got this on? And they were like, well, that's the music that I listen to. And I said, well, I don't, I don't listen to that kind of music. That person looked at me and said, this ain't your car. <laughs> <laughs> right? Amen, right? Amen. This ain't your car. So you don't get to tell me what I get to listen to in my car. Now, when we're in your vehicle, you can listen to whatever you want to. So every time I got in that vehicle, every time I got in that vehicle, KB and me was wrong. And if you believe that God can't speak to you through music, you are wrong. Amen. Because he can. He speaks to us every Sunday morning through Brandon and Krista and Savannah. And I'm going to stop on this line and I'm going to say to Savannah, I'm going to look at you and I'm not trying to embarrass you. I know you're out of your comfort zone sometimes up here and you don't want to sit in front of us, but we encourage you. We encourage you to sing. We love it. No matter if you're off key or you're not, you have God's beautiful voice. Use that talent. Use it for His glory. Because we need you. The congregation needs you. So guys, whenever you think there's something that you can't do, God can do it. Amen? Amen. I mean, do you think this country boy right here was meant to come up on stage and give you a message. Listen, I ran from that. When I was going through my struggles, I ran as far and as fast as I can. I'm heavy, so it wasn't very fast. <laughs> but, boy, I tell you, I thought I was a track star. And I ran and I ran and I ran. And when that KDV music was playing, God said, I'm ready for you. And I didn't know if I was ready. But he kept on telling me, you're ready. Back then, you wasn't ready. You weren't ready. You weren't ready for what I had for you. But now you are. You're ready. Let's go. Let's look. And there's people who looked at me and said, huh? You're going to do what? And me and Brother Mac, the other part of this is I believe it's our fear. We're all afraid of something. I hear people say, man, I'm not afraid of nothing. But we're all afraid of something. And it's our fear that's inside of us that says, God, I'm not. I'm not ready. I don't know enough about the scriptures just yet. I don't know enough about church politics just yet. So we make an excuse. Hey, I'm just learning how to play the guitar. I don't know how to play the drums very well. Did you ever think that he could equip you? Did you ever think that he could put it inside of you? Because he can. And I tell the teens this on Wednesday night all the time. Guys, don't give me your church answer. I don't want to hear your church answer. And I talked to Brother Jim about this because I thought, well, maybe I'm the only one who's saying that. Brother Jim says the same thing. Don't tell me what you think. I want to hear. Tell me what's on your heart. Because that's where it matters. What's on your heart. And if you can't share your heart with me, then who can you share it with? Right? If I'm their youth pastor and you can't share what's on your heart with me, who can you share it with? Because those guys are looking and they're saying, I should be able to talk to him about anything. But if I shut him out and say, hey, listen, no, no, no. And I tell them all the time in, in Wednesday night, what does God want with you? He wants a relationship with you. What is a relationship? A husband and wife have a relationship. Friends have relationships. 
So why do we make it so difficult for God to have a relationship? Why can't we just talk to him? It's that simple. Hey, God, I don't know what you want from me today, but please give me the strength. Please give me that, whatever it is, that motivation to step up and do your work. Father, give me that ability to do the things that I'm uncomfortable doing. But we'll use excuses. We really will to stop us from doing it. I'm not downplaying the situation because COVID is real. It was real. But guys, there's always something bigger and better on the horizon, right? You don't hear about COVID no more. Russia's in the news. This is happening. That's happening. And there's no COVID anymore. So I can just, where, where did it go? What happened to it? But we use that as a crutch to say, man, we need to close the church doors. This is where we needed to be at that time. We needed to be here. We needed to be in support of each other, around like-minded Christians to say, hey, Brother Jim, how are you doing? Sister Kayla, how are you? Sister Katie, how are you? Brother Russell, how are you doing today? We needed that. We need that uplifting, that support, that encouragement. You need that every day. Go to Sunday school. Find a class that fits you. Hey, nobody cares if you're over 50. If that's the class that you feel like you connect with, go to it. Nobody's going to tell you to get out. If you feel like you want to hear Brother Jim up in the team room, go. I don't think he's going to tell you what you're doing here. He may look at you strange when you walk in the door, but I don't think he's going to tell you to get out. Guys, find the place that you connect. Because we all connect somewhere. Sister Kayla does the resurrection run. I was blessed to be a part of that this year. The first time that I was really a part of it. And to see that ministry. Guys, people are running. And they're, correct me if I'm wrong, they're paying to run? <laughs> I mean, come on. Really? Does this look like something that's going to pay to run? I mean, you know. I mean, but there's a, there's a spot for everybody. You know what I mean? It's, we put limits on ourselves. We put those limits on ourselves that we say, I can't, I can't do it. So when we talk about forgiveness, and I said, you've got to first ask for forgiveness that holds you back. Second, you must forgive those who have hurt you. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. And this is out of the New Living Translation. It says, in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and have it straight away. Amen. Guys, he's not after. He's, he's, he's not after that 99. He's after you. He's, he's going after you. So don't make an excuse. Be that one. Right? Be that one. So how do we apply this to our life? How do we apply it to our homes? How do we apply, apply it to our church? I know that there are many who are hurting. I know there's a lot of people who are suffering. They're worried. They're stressed. They have fear. I know that people have experienced hardships. But guys, that doesn't mean that we should fold. Just because Brother Max Fold up shop and go home. Amen. We got to come here every day. And we got to make this place be the place that when you come here, you feel the power and the love and the connection and that feeling 
that when you first walked in that back door at Ebenezer Baptist Church, you felt it. I felt it. That's why I'm here. You felt it. That's why you're here. We got to get back to that. Get back to that feeling. Isaiah 53, verse 5 in the New Living Translation. It says, But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be home. He was whipped so that we could be healed. Guys, take that in for just a second. Take that in. Jesus suffered for us. He didn't have to. At any point, he could have said, God, not me. He even prayed about it in the garden. And he said, Lord, this isn't my will, but yours. Use me. This man who came to earth to take a beating for us. A man who was without sin. Guys, he didn't do anything to anyone. All he did was love. All he did was try to teach us how we're supposed to be. But he took that on for us. So if he can do that, and I know none of us are Jesus. I get that. But if he can do that, can't we do our little part to help those out in need? Amen. Can't we reach out to those who are hurting? We have to lift each other up. We have to. Because that's what God calls us to do. I have one more thing that I want to share with y'all. And I'm sure some of you have heard it. Some of you maybe not. It's called the story of two boys. So, an old Cherokee chief was teaching his grandson about life. And he says to his grandson, a fight is going on inside of me, he told the young boy. A terrible fight between two boys. One is evil, full of anger, sorrow, regret, greed, self-pity, and false pride. The other is good, Full of joy, peace, love, humility, kindness, and faith. The grandfather said, The same fight is going on inside of you. And inside of every other person on this earth. The grandson thought about it for a minute. And then he asked his grandfather, Which will for him? The old man smiled. Man. Guys, what do you feel? When someone looks at you, are you feeding kindness? Are you feeding faith? Are you feeding all those things? Are you putting on that, that armor of God? Are you showing them what will you want to be? Because I promise you, we're showing them one wolf or the other. We are. But which one do you want to be? So my ending for today is who will you become? Who will this church become? Will we continue to stay disconnected or will we plug ourselves into the life source that sustains us in every way? And that's God. Father, I just ask and I just pray that you will Light that spark inside of us, Lord. Take away those empty things that we say we can't do. Take away that fear. Take away that doubt. Take away all those, those little excuses that we make. And Lord, light that fire in us. Light it in this church. Light it in this building. Make us be a light for this community. Make us be a light for industry. Make us be a light for the state. Make us be a light for all who come in contact with us. Lord, we need you. 
We ask for you to come in. We ask for you to be here with us. We ask for you to lift us up. We love you. We need you. In Jesus' name. Now, guys, if there's anybody here who has never experienced the love of Jesus Christ and they don't know how to get it, you've never taken the Lord as your personal Savior, now is the time. It's your time. Come up to the front. We come down to the front. The guys up here, I'll be here. Brother Bob will be here. Brother Jeff will come to you. Any man here, any woman here, will come down. And I'll tell you about what. We've been going through some of your brother also some of your favorite prophecy stuff and uh, and I guess my, my challenge today kind of stems from that and and I guess my question to you is who here likes change? <laughs> who likes change? Nobody? No. Well I know when I send my son to school to milk for milk and I get the 40, I want the change. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you like change and just go on. But you know, things change. A lot of and, and we, we have to, every day we deal with change. You know, changing your work schedule, changing the season, <coughs> changing your sleep habits, changing your. No. Anyway, um, just change. Just change. Nobody likes change for the most part. But in Matthew 24, Jesus said, And you hear wars and rumors. See, the, see that you're not alarmed. For this must take place. But the thing is not yet. So what is he saying? Give me some changes. Because we always just kind of focus in on that little bit of a, of a check about the wars and rumors of the wars. And stuff. But what else is it going to change? They're going to hate you. They're going to persecute you. They're going to kill you. There's going to be lawlessness. They're going to What do we see today? We see a lot of changes. Do you like it? No, don't like it. But you know what? I'm embracing it. Not because I'm changing my mind. Because I'm not just going to change the residence. Amen. Right? So I'm not saying you have to adopt the changes that are being made. But those changes must. Only problem is the changes for some people is a change of generation. So maybe we need to change our way of thinking of reaching out. Reaching out to those people who are lost. So they can make that change. Go to heaven with us. Because Jesus said, well, for God so loved the world. not perish have everlasting life make that change so I hope you have a great week I challenge you to go make that change and help somebody else see that they do that change as well thank you brother Clyde it's been a good day to be in the house of the Lord amen, amen. thank you brother Eddie for the message this morning for those of you who have joined us online thank you for being with us today and uh, we pray for you as you go out into your spaces and your places this week, may the Lord bless and keep you and be gracious to you, shine his face upon you, all the good stuff. And uh, know that God loves you and we love you. And church, it's it's